What's going on, fam? We're back with another FAQ. That's right, you asked a bunch of questions. We're gonna answer it. S stay tuned. What's going on? I'm Scott from Koenig, and we're gonna be doing another FAQ video. Before we do, we'd like you to subscribe. You know, please. So one of the questions that we get quite a bit has to do with why a wheel that may look identical to another wheel or may look very similar to another wheel could have a different weight. And a lot of people are looking at that and they're trying to compare when they're doing their purchase selection and they're trying to find out why do they weigh differently. One of the things that we have to always remind people to keep into account is the fact that the wheel has a given load rating. See, the first thing you need to understand is how you need to find the appropriate load rating for your car. It's real simple. We're gonna go over to the car here and we're gonna look for the sticker that's right about here. You're gonna see a gross vehicle weight. You're also going to see the heaviest axle weights. Now that you've done that, you take the heaviest one and you divide by two. Don't take the gross vehicle weight and divide by four. When you start comparing wheels, the load ratings may not be the same. You may choose a wheel that's lighter and then find out that it's not really effectively load rated for your vehicle. Now, while load rating isn't necessarily a number that determines strength inherently, one thing that you should understand is that load rating usually means there's gonna be some more material to be able to account for a little bit more of uh, you know weight on the car it generally will be a little bit stronger, especially if the numbers are close. If the numbers are really far apart, it's definitely gonna take up some more abuse. So keep this in mind. It's a good thing when you're comparing apples to apples to make sure that you, you know, have your apples. So one of the other questions we get is what are the numbers in the back of the wheel? Often somebody will say, I'm not sure which wheel I have, but I have the 690 kg. And well, that's not the name of the wheel. And what that refers to is the load rating of the wheel. To show you the illustration here, I have to bring in one of my friends. Koenig Hypergram. Right in the back of the wheel here, you'll see 700 kg. This is how much load rating the wheel has. This wheel is gonna be load rated at 1,543 pounds. If you use that whole divide by the heaviest axle weight thing I just showed you, you'll be able to figure that out, know that this wheel will hold a given weight load rating and be able to pick the right wheel for your car. So one of the things that seems to come up a lot when people are looking to try to figure out their wheel weight is does a different offset in the same size wheel change the weight of a wheel? And the answer to that is actually really simple is yes. Whenever you have an offset change, 99.9% .9 of the time, there's gonna be some method that they've used to change the offset, which is going to change the weight. Sometimes you'll find that they actually build that offset on the pad. Other times it may be a totally different mold. I mean, there could be a lot of ways to get there, but bottom line is the offset change will definitely have a weight difference. Now, some people will say, oh, it can't be that much, but I'll be honest with you, if it's a 10 millimeter offset, sometimes it can actually be quite a bit. Not really anything you have to worry about. You can easily go to the manufacturer's website and actually ask them for the weight, but uh, it is something to keep in mind. This way, just you don't assume that just because you're getting a, a slightly different offset that the weight's gonna be exactly the same. So kind of rolling into the next point, no pun intended, sometimes we get asked the question of, will a narrower wheel always weigh less than a wider wheel? For example, let's say we make a Koenig Hypergram in 18 by nine and a half, and then we make a Koenig Hypergram in 18 by 10 and a half. The 10 and a half will always weigh more because it's a bigger wheel, right? In a hypergram, 18, 10 and a half does weigh less than an 18, nine and a half. And the reason that this is possible is for a couple reasons. One, we use flow form technology, which means that the wider the wheel gets, the less weight per that width it's going to weigh. You have to understand that the hypergram in a 10 and a half is a B profile, meaning it's a whole different mold. So because we're not gonna use a huge range there and we're gonna be making very specific offsets in the 18 by 10 and a half, we can actually remove a lot of extra weight that may be necessary on the nine and a half to do a bunch of different offsets. Don't just take for granted and assume that the size of the wheel actually contributes to its weight. 
So the last question that we're gonna to answer today has to do with us specifically. When you look for the weights, it will say, this is a projected weight. We can't weigh every single wheel. We have tons of different SKUs. So what we do is we use a 3D projection to be able to find weights and we list most of those on our website. If you don't see projected, it means that we actually weighed it. However, one thing to keep in mind is our projections are usually very close. So you should be good. So thanks for hanging with us. Thanks for asking those questions. Again, if you have any other questions, throw them down below. We'll be happy to answer them. And we are always looking to do more of these videos because you always seem to keep asking us questions. Thanks. We'll catch you in the next one.